Hey guys, welcome back to math. It's Miss Patrick. Today we're going to continue looking at equivalent fractions. I know that you guys have been doing it a lot and you guys are getting really good at it. What we worked on earlier this week was when we're given two numbers, two fraction numbers, and we have to figure out whether or not those fractions are equivalent. Today, what we're going to work on is actually when we just have one fraction and we have to find another fraction that is equivalent to it. So it's really similar. We're still going to be talking a lot about equivalent fractions, a lot about visual models, but it's going to be a little bit different of an experience for us. Okay. So let's start with a fraction. Let's start with one half, a fraction that you guys are all really familiar with. Let's say that we have a question that asks us to find a fraction equivalent to one half. What do we do with that? Where do we start? Well, just like where we start with most math when we're not sure what to do is we're going to start with a visual model. Okay. I'm going to start by drawing a visual model. That's a square. I'm going to try and make a nice neat square and I'm going to say, okay, I've got one half. So I'm going to partition my square into two equal pieces and I'm going to lightly shade one of those halves. That gives me one half. Now for this next part, I'm going to use a second color to help you out, but you really don't have to use a second color if you don't have one at home. So now my task is to find any fraction that's equal to one half. What I'm going to do is I'm going to think about my denominators that kind of go with halves. Well, if we look at our fraction bars here that have halves, we know that fourths and eighths go with halves. If I cut halves in half, I have fourths. If I cut fourths in half, I have eighths. So I'm going to think about these fractions. So I'm going to think about, okay, well, I already have halves here. How could I partition this to make other fractional pieces? I'm not going to change the amount of my hole that's shaded. I'm just going to change how my hole is cut up. Well, I know that anytime I cut halves in half, I get fourths. So why don't we just take the halves we already have, cut them in half, we'll have fourths. So I'm going to use my other color here and I'm going to cut my halves in half like this. Now you can see I have one, two, three, four equal pieces. So I have fourths. So I'm going to make a new fraction with the denominator fourths. I still have one half. I didn't change how much was shaded. I just changed the way my shape was partitioned. Now I also have fourths, but the same amount is shaded, but it's not just one fourth that's shaded. It's one, two fourths that's shaded. So I have two fourths. One half is equal to two fourths. All we did was partition the shape into smaller pieces and count how many of those size pieces make that much. Easy, right? I could even go one step further if I was feeling uh, really brave and I could partition the shape again. I know that if I cut my fourths in half, I get eights. So if I take my eights here or if I take my marker here and partition my shape again, partition each fourth in half, I'll have eight equal pieces. Well, how many eighths are shaded? Remember, I'm not changing what's shaded. One, two, three, four eighths. Notice the smaller my pieces get, the more I cut up my pieces, the more pieces are shaded. The area of the shaded space is not changing at all. It's just the number of pieces that shaded is changing because the pieces are getting smaller, but the shaded part stays the same. So that's one way you can do it is simply by making more partitions. All right. You can do this on a number line to a circle bar model, whatever model you like. All right. Well, let's say we have a fraction that we don't necessarily know how to make smaller pieces of. Let's say we have two sixths. I'm going to draw two sixths for you. Let's do this one on a number line. I'm actually going to partition my whole number line this time and label all of the fractions just to make sure that everybody is seeing what we're doing. Okay. 
All right, so here we have our six. I'm gonna put a dot on two six here. That's the fraction I'm trying to find something equivalent to. Well, on the last problem, we cut our hole into smaller pieces. Well, I know on this, if I cut it up into even smaller pieces, I'm gonna have, well, you may have guessed it, twelfths. And we really aren't working with twelfths a lot in third grade. I'm not so much worried about twelfths. You could do it, but let's try to work with one of the fractions we've been working with. Instead of cutting up into smaller pieces, I'm gonna see what other pieces I have. So all I'm gonna think about is when I'm partitioning a shape, what kind of pieces do I need in order to make sixths? Well, you know we need thirds to make sixths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come with another color, and like I said, on yours, you don't necessarily have to use another color, and I'm going to, actually on the same exact number line, draw thirds. Well, if I was gonna make thirds, remember my partitions for thirds are already gonna be there because you have to make thirds to make six. So I'm gonna find where my thirds are and I'm gonna draw those partitions there and label my thirds. And this time I'm gonna label thirds on top. Two thirds and three thirds. Well, you can easily see what fraction lives at the same place as two sixths, one third. So that means an equivalent fraction to two six is one third. To recap, two ways that we've practiced finding another fraction that's equal with visual models is one, to cut your pieces into smaller pieces, keep the same amount shaded, and just count what's shaded now, or two, to kind of backtrack and think about what pieces did I need to make these pieces in order to make six you know you need thirds. So let's find how many thirds we need to make six, this number of six, okay? Good luck with your practice this week. I know you're gonna do a great job. Please let your teacher know if you need any help. I know it can get really tricky, especially if the model's not there for you. My advice to you is to draw your model. If you feel stuck, draw a model, draw two models even if you need, okay? Keep sending in your pictures of any kind of work or drawings or models that you've made. I'm super proud of what I've seen so far. Here's a couple pictures for you. And wow, do I love those fraction bars. Keep sending them in to this email address below. All right, best of luck learning this week. Bye.